Hi, I'm Dave Cathy, The Food Dude, and today it's my great pleasure to have Chef Rick Bayless. Chef, thanks so much for stopping in today. Oh gosh, it's my pleasure. This, he is an Oklahoma original. He's here, he's here for the Saints Hospital uh, event that's going on this week. You've, you've achieved so much. I mean, it, like I said, this is, a, this is a big deal for me today. I'm, I'm really excited to have you here. Let's first, let's do talk about the reason you're in town right now. Okay, well, I came for St. Anthony. Um, they do a Celebrity Chef series every year, and it's done at the Saints Heart and Vascular section over there. But it's just really fun be for me because, you know, when I grew up here I, eating Tex-Mex food, it's kind of heavy stuff. <laughs> and yet I'm here talking about ways that you can make food healthy and still delicious. All I have to do is go to my other roots, which are in Mexican cooking right. in Mexico, right. and it's just really fresh, beautiful stuff. So it's an easy thing for me to talk about because it's the food I love. That's cool. That's really cool. And you know, it's funny you say that. I mean, you're known Mexico one plate at a time. It's been going on for seven seasons now. No, it's actually, we're moving into our ninth, ninth season, season now. I can't even yes, keep up. I can't either. <laughs> Sometimes I'm wondering when, <laughs> what are we doing? I mean, it's, it's, you have done so much for Mexican cuisine in this country and as somebody who grew up with that kind of food I'm, I'm it's, it means even more to me and when I was talking with some of your family a while back uh, I asked them about it and it, the idea that they threw to me was that as a very young kid you developed this this infatuation with Mexican culture and, right. and basically you made them take a trip I actually did. Now, I, I have a child mm -hmm. who just turned 21. And if she came to me and said, I want to plan our family vacation, I would say, okay, I think maybe you're up to it. But I was 14 years old. And <laughs> no I told internet. my, no internet. I told my parents that I was going to do the whole thing. Book the airlines, book the hotels, plan our itinerary, the whole shebang. And I had never been out of the country before. I had never certainly been to Mexico, a place that I had dreamed of going. But at this point, I was just imagining it all. <laughs> and I planned it all. Well, first of all, they said yes, that they would allow me to do that. Of course, they reviewed what I had done. But we took that trip, and it changed my life, obviously. I always say that when I got to Mexico City, and it took us the whole day to get there, basically. But when we got to Mexico City about 8 o'clock at night, we took a taxi into town, right downtown, the old Del Prado Hotel. It, it, I got there and I felt like that I had come home. There was something about it that felt so right to me. We got into the hotel. We had a beautiful room that faced out onto the Alameda Park. I looked out there. This is probably 10 or 11 o'clock at night. You know, here in Oklahoma City, 10 or 11 o'clock <laughs> at night, the sidewalks are all rolled up. Right. There they were all still out. There was so much activity. You could hear the mariachis playing at the Garibaldi Square. And I thought, this is what I want. This yeah. is life to me. That's very, that's, that's so amazing. Yeah. And let's go back a little bit now. To, to be that interested in Mexico, that had to come from somewhere. Talk a little bit about how that developed. I, I actually don't know, except for the fact that I was really interested in other cultures. Sure. And I grew up going, uh, I, I, I had always sort of explored cultures th through their food. And I was always reading different cookbooks. Mm -hmm. I would ride my bicycle down to our little public library, mm -hmm. and I would check out different cookbooks, especially during the summer. Mm -hmm. And then I would always make a meal of whatever cuisine that I was sure. interested in at the end of the summer for my family. I think they suffered through it. I had a lot of fun, but they suffered through it. <clears throat> but that sort of got me interested in Mexico as well as other cultures. And at that point, being the kid of restaurateurs here in Oklahoma City, it was a sort of middle class existence mm -hmm. that we had very little time off, which mm -hmm. is what happens when you're in the restaurant business. Right. And we closed our restaurant for one week a year mm -hmm. and we planned a, a trip someplace. And I thought the furthest I will ever get away from my home ever in my life is to go to Mexico. <laughs> and so I was the one that came up with this idea and they went for it. That's awesome. Well, you mentioned the family restaurant, the Hickory House. The Hickory House. Where you could have somebody cook your goose for you for, uh, tell, yes. talk about the Hickory well, House. <laughs> first of all, I have to say thank you to you because you've gone back into the, the Daily Oklahoman archives and dredged up all these right. wonderful old ads that my dad put into the, the newspaper. And we but, appreciate that. Well, that, right, right. I think they don't cost, they didn't cost that way right. then what they cost now. But um, my, my 
parents had a restaurant for 37 years at 25th and Southwestern. <clears throat> it was an Oklahoma barbecue style restaurant. My father, who was not a chef, but was interested, you know, he sort of married into this food family mm -hmm. and decided that he too was going to get into the food mm -hmm. world. And he was going to do something different. Um, he was going to do barbecue. And I don't know why he decided barbecue was the right thing for him. I, I, he died a long time ago and I mm -hmm. never really got to ask him that question. Mm -hmm. But he put together this huge, he built this huge pit. Mm -hmm. He was kind of a, an inventor guy. Right. And he built this beautiful brick pit, which was a centerpiece of our barbecue restaurant. He, in, he did all of his investigations to how to do it, talked to lots of people, and he built this really cool pit. And we cooked in that, and it was sort of like, it was the hearth, mm -hmm. if you will, right, of, right. of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I grew up with that. I always say that it was my, everything I owned was just completely <laughs> impregnated with the right. smell of hickory smoke. Our whole house smelled like hickory smoke because we all worked at the restaurant and then we'd come home and it was the perfume of my existence. And I was telling the story earlier today over at St. Anthony's uh, during our lunch thing that it, it wasn't until I hit puberty and started to think about girls and dates <laughs> and that sort of thing that I realized, my goodness, I reek <laughs> of hickory smoke. So I would segregate off a part of my clothing that wouldn't touch any of the other stuff right. that I would work in or take out to our restaurant. See, that's planning. That's good. It was, yes. I, I had my priorities straight. <laughs> well, and as I understand it, you know, during that time, I believe your mother told me you were running the catering by the time you got out of high school. Actually, I did it when I was in high school. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> Yes, yeah. my father died when I was in high school. My mother took over the restaurant. I took over the catering business. Yeah. And I did that. And then I did it all through college as mm -hmm. well. So we kind of split up the, the activities. I, mm -hmm. I stayed at home. I lived at home. I was a very busy person because I did <laughs> high school in three years that's and right. college in that's three right. years and worked pretty much full time through that whole thing. But I've always won, been one that's uh, liked to bite off a whole yeah. lot. And you wonder why he's had any success. <laughs> I mean, he's an achiever, so that's, that's, that's really cool.